Okay, hey everyone, welcome back to Designing Your uh, your Business Model for Social Impact. Today, we're actually going to be talking about the business model okay. because there's so many types of business models that you can um, decide to use in order to build a profitable, sustainable, and compliant social impact business, right? It's profitable, sustainable, compliant, like the, that, that's where it goes. <laughs> profitable, sustainable, compliant. All right. Um, and then there are lots of different things that go in between there, but that's the, the big three. So my name is Tracy V. Allen. I'm the owner of TVA Consulting Group, and I help social impact businesses to design, build, and fund their social ventures. Hi, right, and my name is Ty Boone. I am owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I help mostly nonprofit organizations move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. Tracy, it gets it gets funny when you start talking about business models, girl, because people folks just be doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, like what's your business model? Folks just be doing stuff, right? I'm just, I'm just trying to make some money. I don't I don't know what I'm doing, right? Um, I like I said, I, I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, and that's a model all into itself. Um, but there's various ways that you draw in revenue that adds to the structure of the model, right? Tracy mentioned compl- C in that in your in your I can't what, what your acronym were you you, mm-hmm. you compliance and I, I think for most especially in the nonprofit and, and even in the social if you're doing a social enterprise that compliance is the biggest concern because a lot of people aren't sure where the lines cross like you know am I able to uh, am I able to sell this and have that kind of business am I able to work over here and do this kind of business and and where there's not always a black and white answer to it compliance is black and white you're either in compliance or or, or not or you're not and if you're not you can get into some some trouble um there's no gray areas in compliance there's no gray (laughs) for profit then there's also you know there's various ways you can profit Mm -hmm. but not all of those are compliant methods and i, I right. think that that's where we kind of miss the mark a lot you know depending on what kind of if you're a nonprofit or if you're a social enterprise or if you're some mixed model of something um that you're that you're trying to put out here i have people i was this morning i was looking on facebook and i and i ran across a, a nonprofit that's local here they have a thrift store you know for example mm-hmm. and i look my daughter and i love this thrift store um, I, I ended up clicking on the link because I never even visited their website or anything before. I just really have like the bomb thrift store. They have two locations here, Tracy. And I'm like, mm, they, they got all the good stuff. But when I clicked on it, it's the, the organization is um, to help women who are transitioning out of substance abuse uh, programs or whatever. They're, that's what they're mm-hmm. about. They provide housing. They have an entire program and it's on their website, right? An entire program of how the services are provided, how you graduate, how you come into the program, how you get out of the program, how their funds are generated, the right there spelled out on their website, right? Mm-hmm. Their entire model, how they're getting this and what how this thrift store comes into play, right there on the website makes complete sense, right? But we have a lot of people who jump out and say, Well, I have a nonprofit, I want to have a thrift store, which generally speaking, it's okay. But is your organization set up to have a thrift store? Like, is this what you were, is this how you structured your business to have a thrift store? Is this something that you could, should be doing? Depending on how you designed your organization, are you even in compliance with the operations of your nonprofit with this thrift store? Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. So you mm-hmm. want to make sure that you're doing the, the right things. Yeah, I agree. Um, because I've seen a lot of nonprofits add, like you said, their stores to their business models. Um, but a lot of times they have to go back to the board mm-hmm. and they have to make amendments to their business model in order to add the strip, the um, thrift store, but it made sense for them because they needed a source of earned income. That's a business model onto itself. I constantly hear nonprofit people tell me that um, they don't, charge because they're a nonprofit and nonprofits don't charge. Nonprofits give everything away for free. And that is not true. 
<laughs> you know, nonprofits can have earned income. Mm -hmm. um, so that in itself is a business model. There are sliding scales that you can in, um, put in there that, you know, makes it another type of business model. So there's many different ways for nonprofits to um, to shake up their their business model. They can have a hybrid nonprofit where they have a for profit someplace like the thrift store and then they have the nonprofit um, portion. But of course, it has to make sense, like you said, right? You can't just add a thrift store because, oh, I think I want to add a thrift store. How does it relate to what it is that you're doing, <laughs> right? So if you're dealing with something that has to do with women and children, then that's a natural flow, right? But if you thrift store, so these these ladies, these this particular thrift store I'm talking about, a part of their program is mm -hmm. to employ them. So they're exactly working. that's what I'm saying. But not only that, some of the 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 um the the clothing that are donated to the thrift store can go to the people who need it as well, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a good business model to have. In a social impact business, you have a lot of different business models. You have the give one, get one um, business model. You have, uh, of course, it's definitely an earned income model because it's a for-profit business. And you're in business to do what? To make money, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're not making money, then you have a hobby, not a business. Can you say that again? Yeah. Can you say that? <laughs> if you're a business and you're not making money, you don't have a business. You have a hobby. Mm -hmm. Businesses make money. Nonprofit non organizations are businesses too, and they have to make money. The first thing you have to do, and I mean, I'm going to talk about social enterprises, but I want to piggyback on nonprofits. The first thing you have to do as a nonprofit organization is incorporate on a state level as a business, a nonprofit business. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the IRS. Mm -hmm. So you are a business, mm -hmm. right? And you're expected to make money. That's a problem. Um, that's if you're that's filing that's 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 every year, ooh. that's a problem. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. like, don't make, don't, okay, that's going to be for next month, right? Because <laughs> I got so much to say. And you, you said, you, you said, you know, nonprofits kind of get into this thing where they're like, oh, we're not supposed to make money. We're supposed to give everything for free. If you're giving everything for free, then what are you giving? Because somebody somebody is paying for it. I always say, it ain't nothing free but salvation. Ain't nothing. And Jesus paid for that. So somebody still got to pay for something. <laughs> somebody somewhere has to pay for something. So that means you have to make money in order to pay the bills. It's just got, for me, it's kind of it's an easy thing. But then, you know, also going back to compliance, because and you talk about you bit a lot, right? You talk about that a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of nonprofits don't understand, though, what kind of, you know, wh what they're supposed to be doing. Right. You know, this relates to my mission. Folk over here trying to don't understand their model. Mm -hmm. they, you know, a lot of people who are who are registered and formed as strict nonprofits are really trying to do something different. Right. A lot of them are wanting for profit businesses and probably should have gone a different way. You know, probably should have done something a, a different way. Probably should have just did a for-profit business and left it alone. But there, right. you know, a lot of them are thinking, "Oh, I want to get grants. I want to get donations. I want to get whatever." So I'm going to be a nonprofit business, and then this mess up the whole. Then they're all out of compliance because they don't understand what model they're supposed to even be working with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you said it. Yeah. And I think that's one of the first things that we have to do as business owners, whether we're going into a social impact business, we're going into a nonprofit, or we're just going into regular business, is to figure out what business model we're going to be using. Because it just makes things easier. It's easier to plan out your business, plan out a strategy, um, if you know what business model you're using, right? And then we can talk about most people not even bothering to do a business plan because if you did a business plan you would know the business model mm -hmm. so it, it's just a lot of different things but like yeah like so like i was saying for social um social entrepreneurs or social um enterprises you can have the buy one give one model a lot of big corporations tend to use that model because it's easy they just upcharge you the person who's paying full price and then they're able to they still make a profit even though they give away one. So it's an easy model, right? So you're paying um, maybe say $50 for something that they paid $5 for. And then um, 
when you pay your $50, if it costs $5, they really only, they didn't lose any money because it really only cost them $10. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? <laughs> Yeah, so that's a buy one, give one. Mm-hmm. And then you have your like your employment model. And of course, you have your fee for service model. Like, so you have different models. And even as a social um enterprise, you can have your low income client model, which is your, you know, your sliding scale, your subsidies. So there's so many different models that you can use. I could go on and on about models, but just understanding that you need to know the business model that you are using in your business in order for it to work mm-hmm. you have to know what model you're using mm-hmm. you can't approach people and ask for money and you don't know the model you're using because some smart alec is going to ask you what is that your business model <laughs> you know and you don't want to be there like uh uh you know <laughs> yeah so, and, you, and like you said, you do it first. Like you do this first so you can plan. You already know where your revenue is coming from. If this is, if I know that I'm, if that this is going to be a fee for service model, I already know I need to develop some services that I, that I can charge you for. Just, just that. Uh, so many people come to us, Tracy, not even not knowing. Well, how do I get money? First of all, what? Let's see what model best suits your mission and every and even if you're nonprofit, for profit, whatever profit you are, there's still a mission. There's mm-hmm. still people that you're serving. You still got to know how you serve them. You still got to know what problem you're solving with this service. Even if you're a for profit business, if I'm selling t-shirts, but the problem that I'm solving is people need t-shirts, not provide them for them. Right. So that's you, you still have so knowing that and then understand well, what's the best how do I what model do I fit into this thing? So what do I want? Right. How do I want to make my money? How do I want to make this profitable? You know, so right. something. Do I want to give a lower price if I'm doing a, 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 a social impact, a social entrepreneur model? Do I want to give a lower price to people who are coming in that can't afford it? Do I want to sell family union, reunion t-shirts for a dollar and all the other t-shirts for $18 because I'm, I have this thing about families. I want to build strong families. Like what, how, what, do I, what is it that I want to do? Mm-hmm. I already know. Yeah. And just knowing what you want to do um, is half the battle. <laughs> you know what it is that you want to do, then you can build from there. If you have no clue, then there's nothing to build from. You ain't got right? no money. You ain't got no clue. You ain't got no money. I'm just, I'm just... Exactly. So oh, uh, that's our two cents when it comes to the um, the business model aspect. Like I said, I think we did. Didn't we do a whole series on just business models before? We did like. Like I think last year, if I find it, guys, I'll just tag it in here. But we did we did a, a, an extensive series on business models before, so you can go back and look at those videos. There should be a playlist. Doing it again because we still got we <laughs> yeah a lot of the stuff we have to just keep going over because there's different aspects to a lot of these different um topics. So we tend to do them over and add more details and changes, especially like compliance stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you want to stay in the know and stay in the loop and, and you know, understand, right. understand right. what model you have so that you can know what compliance change applies to you. All right. All right. All right. Until next time, guys. Bye bye. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mission Impact Series with Tracy and Ty. And this is the last in the series of Designing Your Business Model for Social Impact. And today we're going to be talking about operating and resource strategies. So if you've been following this series, or if you have not been following the series, we've already talked about who is a change and who is a change agent. And then we talked about um, the second video is about social venture strategies and social impact strategies. And then the last one we did was about business models. And now today we're going to be talking about operating um, and resource strategies. And this will wrap that whole series up, right? So what are operating and resource strategies and where do you find them? Who plays a role in them? What type of software? Those are things that we're going to explore today. 
If this is your first time catching Mission Impact Series, my name is Tracy B. Allen. I'm the owner of TBA Consulting Group, where I help social impact businesses design, build, and fund their social ventures. All right. I am Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And it takes all kinds of system strategies, all, all kinds of stuff. You know, we just ain't doing stuff out here, Tracy. <laughs> We just ain't doing it. We not Nike over here. No offense to Nike. Right, right. just do it. <laughs> uh, you want to start? You want to start? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can start. So, um, operating resources. So, as a social impact business, you have to know what it is that you need to run your operation. So, you've decided what your business model is. You understand what a social um, what a change agent is. We looked at strategies, goals versus strategies and how to implement those strategies. But like I talked about, I think I talked about in that same video, which is um, social impact strategies and social venture strategies. I talked about resources, right? And the stages of, of strategies. That's where the operational resources come in because in order to get those strategies out, you're going to need to have certain systems in place that allow you and resources to implement the strategies that you create effectively so that you create impact within your community. Mm -hmm. So with looking at the operating resources and strategies, okay, so what do we need to operate this, this um, organization? Um, we need an ED. Do we need a fundraise, somebody to do just primarily fundraising? We need... Um, a secretary, because we need somebody at the front desk if you have a brick and mortar or to answer calls to do some kind of outreach. Do we need an outreach person? Are we going to be running programs? So do we need a program specialist? Those are the operating strategies. And then for me, the resources come in with who are we going to partner with and within the community to help us to create impact within the community. Because we can't do it by, by ourselves, right? We're just one entity in this big city of probably 3 million people, right? We need partners. We need other resources in order to help us to um, create the impact that we need to create in the, in the community. So we're going to go out and we're going to make real partnerships, build relationships, with other organizations and they can become our resource partners so that we can refer our clients to them so we can have what we call holistic or, um, oh, I'm looking for the word. Anyway, but having, um, <laughs> I, and I said it last time we did this, but we can have around like, you know, services that are encompassing the entire per person so that they're not left to fall back into whatever habit it was that they're trying to get out of. So we need to build those resource partners and those resource partners become our allies in helping us to get the word out, to build awareness of our existence within the community as well. Mm -hmm. This, you know, it all, for me, it all goes back to um, logic model inputs, right? What do we what do we need to make this thing work? Who do we need to make this work? What kind of money do we need to make this work? What systems do we need? What what people do we need to make this work? To make this a functional functional business organization? Who needs to be here? What kind what kind of resources are we looking for? Do we need transportation? Do we need an ED? Do we need a pro? All this stuff. How are we going to make it work? So and going back to a couple of series ago where we talked about implementation, right? We can't mm -hmm. implement without proper tools. Right. So we know that we have to do something. What are the tools that are going to expedite this process? What? Who do we need? Are there people? Are there places? Are there other communities? Are there other organizations? Are there different you know, folks who we want to become partners and allies with to help us to progress along our mission? Because that's what it's all about. You know, what, what is the mission? And what are the little pieces? Um, you know, not just, and we, when I think about systems, usually I think about you know having some type of protocols in place, and you know operational procedures in place, and systems in place, and even things yeah, all, being, yes, all of that, mm -hmm. all of that being in place, bylaws in place, mm -hmm. even all the way over to QuickBooks and, and, and Salesforce, like what all the way over there. What are those little pieces that go into this puzzle to make that? 
pretty picture that we want to create at the end. Mm -hmm. Knowing when is the right time to bring in certain resources in our yeah. because everything is not needed all at once. You know, I had a question the other day where you know people love to be CEOs even when they're like the only person. I, I'm not going to talk about that thing either. Even when they're, <laughs> I've, I've convinced myself not to have a problem with that, but sometimes I do because mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, if you're the only person who who works here, like there's absolutely nobody else here in mm -hmm. your organization can you be executive director and not be CEO? And then like, well, I like CEO. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to fuss with you. Just be who, be all that you can be. <laughs> be whatever you want. <laughs> but, you know, if your organization is at this, at a stage where it's growing and you're, and you're needing to get in multiple program directors or executive directors or COOs and CFOs and, and managers and outreach workers and all these people, when do we bring those in? When is the time? You know, if this is day one and we haven't and we ha we don't we're not starving anybody, then maybe it's not the time. Maybe it's not a fiscally responsible decision to bring in somebody that you're having to pay a, a seventy thousand dollars salary for when you ain't serving but one person. Because <laughs> where you go get the money from to cover this. So strategic planning, you know, also what we talk about a lot. People are kind of missing out on doing that that'll kind of pump you into different spaces of when you even need to bring in certain pieces of the operation or certain parts of the systems that you use to make this thing work. Yeah, it's about what we always talk about, right? Um, building community partners, building relationships, looking at your systems and processes, making sure that they were having a strategy in place. So whether it's from the, your business plan to your strategic plan, to your logic model, your program evaluations, you know, how you're going to even collect data, how you're going to record the data, how you're going to maintain the data, how you're going to use the, the data, like all of it. And that is, I'm going to talk about data and I guess next month or the month after or something like that. Anyways, again, we're talking about data again because it's again. it's ever present, right? It's ever present. So yeah, just looking at the overall aspect of your organization is going to be imperative for the success of it. So that's it. I think for me, do you have any last words? That's all I got, y'all. All right. Okay. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us.